Plea is a story about a very dear friend of mine who is called Amin. Uh, in the film, at least, he's called Amin. Uh, it's a pseudonym. Uh, I met Amin when I was 15 years old, uh, and he arrived to my little Danish village. Um, and we became very good friends. Uh, you know, we met up at the bus stop every morning going to high school, uh, and slowly this friendship grew. Uh, but that's 25 years ago now. And he had come all by himself from Afghanistan and stayed in foster care with a family in the, in the village. Um, and I, of course, was curious about how and why he had gotten there, but he didn't want to talk about it. Until five, six years ago, uh, where he finally decided to, to, to open up and, and share his story with me about how he and his family fled Afghanistan and how he ended up all by himself in a small Danish village. So we chose animation to tell the story uh, for different reasons. Uh, one was that Amin really wanted to, to stay anonymous. You know, this is the very first time he shared a story and it's not easy for him to talk about. So the fact that he could keep control over when he wants to talk about the story was really uh, key to him and was, was what enabled him to open up and share his story for the first time. But also, you know, because most of the story takes place in the past. So how do you make Afghanistan in the 80s come back alive? How do you make Bosco in the 90s come back alive? His childhood home, and how do you place Amin in it? Um, and then also because it's really a story about memory and trauma. Um, and the animation really enabled us to, to, to go a little deeper, you know, and when he started to talk about things that were, that's really hard for him to talk about, uh, we could be a lot more expressive and surreal about it and, and be more honest to his, the emotion he has inside and instead of trying to show what things look like. Amin came out to me when he was six, when I was 16 and he was 16. Uh, so to me, it's been a very natural part of him that he's gay, you know, and it wasn't something special. So I thought it should be a natural part of the story. Uh, but then when we started doing the film and he started to sharing his testimony, I realized, you know, that he always had to hide parts of himself. You know, when he was a, a kid in Afghanistan or young in Afghanistan, he couldn't be openly gay. So he had to hide that away. And then later on, when he arrived in Denmark, he had to hide his past and he had to hide why he had come here. Uh, so all the time he's had to flee parts of himself. Um, so, so to me, those two stories of him being gay and, and him being a, a refugee with a secret past were kind of linked because fundamentally this is a story about a man who's looking for a place where he can be who he is with everything that entails, with his sexuality, with his past and everything else. The pop cultural uh, references in the film, Aha and Roxette and his face and these things, really came from I mean, himself. You know, one of the first interviews I did with him, uh, he started talking about this Walkman he had, this pink Walkman that his sister had given him. Um, and I asked him what kind of music he listened to. And to my surprise, you know, it was some of the same Swedish pop songs that I listened to in my childhood. And he also listened to Madonna and Whitney Houston, all these things. And I felt like, okay, but we need to have this in there to create relatability to understand that that this boy in, in Afghanistan, this gay boy in Afghanistan, listened to the same music I did in Denmark and saw the same films I did in Denmark. Um, I thought that was important to have in there. European cinema to me is really um, diverse. Uh, and I feel that there's a, there's a true uh, love for the art in, in European cinema. It's something about really exploring the art form and, and trying out things. Mm -hmm.